Okay, good morning everyone. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I'm going to turn some fans off a little bit here. This is Shay. I am from Long Hollow Alpacas, and I have been with the birthing barn out of the Wilson County Fair. And there was some questions about an alpaca baby being born. So that's what I am currently trying to get for you in the most non-evasive way to my mom. This is Halkia. This was one of the white ones at the birthing barn. And she is currently in labor. So I'm gonna show you a little bit that's like this. Uh, I know it's not the best view, but she's decided to come right up against the gate. And I'm gonna also, unfortunately, have to make a couple of phone calls while I've got you here. What you're seeing there is the nose and mouth. So far, everything is normal. Sometimes they defecate. We're going to have some visitors that are going to poke their heads in and out as we go through this process. You're welcome, everyone. We're going to do our best to get this birth. You may have heard me say that Halkia has chosen um, a little bit of an awkward location for us today, but we're going to do our best. Hey, everyone. It's nice to see your names again. I'm glad you kept your notification. Sorry for the unsteady hand. I am crouching outside of a gate right now. Hi, Joan from Ontario. I love the, I love Canada. Carol, she did want to be home. She certainly did. So yesterday, she was kind of moping around. It was a pretty humid day. I thought this might be the day, but today apparently is the day, so. So since I'm kind of manning the camera and watching, um, I may not be able to get to all of your questions right away. So far, everything is normal. She's gonna push a little bit more for us, I think. All right, so you can see a nose, you can actually see a tongue. Hey everyone. So this is um, Shay, we're at Long Hollow Alpacas as a part of the Birthing Barn Project to continue that effort in the community, bringing agricultural um, events up close and personal to you. And this is Halkia. She was one of the females at the birthing barn at the Wilson County Fairgrounds. 
We had hoped she would give birth there, but she's waited until we've gotten home, gotten comfortable. It's a pleasant, cool morning here in Tennessee, so it's a good day for a baby. You may have seen some movement there of the nose. This has come on pretty quickly. She's not quite as, I guess, dilated or as stretched as I would like for her to be. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry. She's going to be rolling around and moving for us folks, so we're just going to keep an eye on her and there might be a point that we have to put the camera up on the tripod. Okay, she's doing some active pushing and trying to get the camera where you can see it. This is Halkia at Long Hollow. Are you wanting? Are you wanting to see her? Is that what you want? It's breathing. It's been breathing. She's just gotten gotten started. If you're wanting to open the gate, I can move. So you can see that a lot of the questions that we had the birthing barn is what happens to the other alpacas see her fan but you can see that they're all still here gathered around her while she's laying here in front of the gate they were taking some good breaths some tongue movement Are you going in? Is that what you're doing? Okay. Well, that was my concern was that she was going to my concern was is that everyone was going to crowd in here and that, or that she would take off. So. <coughs> it's 
So just like with all the other births that you witnessed at the birthing barn, um, you're going to find that the moms take a break. The Kriya is breathing. I can see it from here. I know that you can. I apologize for that. I tried to call you Carl, but I went straight to the voicemail. So. Okay. So while we're waiting, I'll try to get some of your questions. Um, we will see the nose first, usually. Um, you may see a, a foot come as well. Sorry about the camera. All right, I think she's gonna do some active pushing. This is how Kia's first Kriya, so we actually are not sure kind of what her protocol will be. We do like for them to stand up so that we have that little aid of gravity to help in the birth process, but it looks like how Kia's chosen to lay down, so we're just going to have to watch the situation closely. We have a bed on standby. Still have breathing. Good morning, Deborah. So this is how Kia, she is in labor. And as I stated before, there might be a moment where I have to put the camera away, put it on a tripod or hand it to a coworker. might have caught the flinch of the nose. So the 
Okay, we're about 16 minutes into Haukia giving birth, so we're just going to watch that clock. Give a big push. There you go. Come on, give a big push. There you go. There you go, baby. Now they're coming up underneath the chin. Go ahead and push the rest of them out.
So this is Shay. I hope that you guys were able to catch that. Sorry, there wasn't a lot of commentary for you, but you were able to actually see the alpaca birth with Carl and Camden and Seth and I here at Long Hollow. We do have a white boy, correct? He's an awfully big boy. Is it a girl? It's a boy. Oh, yeah. So what you're going to see is that Palkia is not going to clean her baby, but she is going to have some bonding time with it. So we usually tend to move back a little bit unless we had poor weather, rainy or cold conditions, then we would be in there helping her to get this baby dry. They do not clean the babies. You see this baby is rolling around. And that is how they remove their sac. Lots of congratulations. Thank you guys. Um, actually, how Kia did all of the work. We had a little twisty leg going on, but that's okay. You're welcome, Cindy. Nice to see you again. 10.44 a.m. in New York. Okay, so that's what, 9.44 here? Just cleaning up my hands a little bit, putting on some sanitizer. I had called it, uh, okay. called it out there real quick. So we're going to take a quick check, okay? Let's, let's look at some of your questions. So what um, what questions do you have as you watch this little one? You're going to see their process where they scoot around. That's why we put that towel down. Thankfully, Camden, um, who is bar manager here at Long Hollow, um, had the, the, the forethought to do a lot of cleaning and, and got air, all the mats ready. So this is actually probably an, an extremely clean environment right now for this little one. We do have black matting down on the floor. Margit from Finland. Thank you for joining us today. I'm sure it's probably quite an incredible time there. Hi, Renee. Long and skinny. Okay, so the question is long and skinny. Is that normal? Um, absolutely. So we would definitely not want to have a wide or fat baby because that's going to make it more difficult for the shoulders to pass, the head to to pass, uh, you know, if we all already are uh, quite a chunky alpaca, then that's going to make delivery a little more difficult. So, long and skinny is preferred. She only had one, yes. So, typically, alpacas have one Korea. Korea is the name of an alpaca baby. It's spelled C-R-I-A. So Halkia is going to go over actually right now, and, and she's having a snack already. So that's why she's kind of moved off to the side. I'm going to keep you kind of focused in on the baby. 
the blood that you see on that towel is it's right there is from more from Halkia than the baby. So Carl's going to go in and do our first umbilical dip for us. We take betadine and do a dip of the umbilicus. And then we start what we call our birthing sheet. So our birthing sheet is going to have all the pertinent information about the birth, including date, name, size, times that we're dipping the umbilical, how everything was delivered, if we saw any complications, if we had to assist any at all, that definitely is gets written down so that we know that for a future. The gestational period of an alpaca is 343 days on average, but we always like to add, give or take, 30 days. It is a boy. The legs are not broken. <laughs> they tend to look very long, lean, mainly skeletal. You're gonna see those uh, gelatin-like tips at the end of each of the toes and that's basically those are going to also slough off the more that the baby moves. There's a question on how long before the baby will stand. That varies uh, from Korea to Korea. So we could tell you an hour but it could be before then. We've had them just this past summer up in less than an hour 30 minutes they were up trying to wobble around so yeah this one's yeah Carl's over here commentarying as well this is a really active one so heads already able to get up a little bit moving around locating mom because today is a warm day you're not seeing us dive in there and start helping to dry that Korea off we're gonna we're gonna let mom and baby have a little time Yes, so someone made a comment, so the, those gelatin tips are a lot like what happens with horses specifically, yes, those will slough off, usually here very shortly. Black Beauty has not given birth yet. Huh? Okay. So yes, my coworker Seth here is telling me actually one of those tips has already sloughed, so the more that we move, we will see those come off. Yes, Korea is what we call the baby of an alpaca. It's not its name. It's it's like a foal for a horse. Hi Diane in Australia. Halkia is five years old and this is her first, first Korea. Yes, Lori, we agree with you. Nature is amazing. Mary, you're asking, do we feel like he's a good weight? Carl, I, I think he looks pretty good. You? Yep. Camden, what do you think? Good weight. Good weight? Oh, absolutely. All right. Probably. Camden's hiding around the corner. 18, 19, at least. Hi, Peg. No, he's not skin and bones. He's, he's pretty good sized. So they will nurse, but it's going to take us a little time to get there. So we want our babies to be up to at least 99 degrees, um, hopefully before they eat. The other alpacas usually will come and greet the baby. You see some tongue action already on the baby right there? Did everybody catch that? We have the other females locked out for the time being now. Because if they came in, trust me, they would be so close to this career, you would not be able to see anything at all. Carrie, yes, he, he will be kept with mom until weaning, and that is usually around, um, yes, six months.
He is wet now, so when he does dry off, he will be um, very fluffy, and you hopefully will catch a few glimpses of that. He's already rolled on his right side, and you can see some of that fiber starting to kind of puff out already. The glare that you're seeing is from the sunshine um, coming in from that side of the barn, and because they are both white animals and he is wet, that's making him kind of glow for you. Hi, Jane. You're welcome, Carrie. So just as a reminder, this is at Long Hollow Alpacas in Gallatin, Tennessee. Um, this is a part of the Birthing Barn Project. Mary Halkia has not passed it after birth yet. So what we're discussing off to the side is that the sack that was covering the Crea was a little bit more thick than what we are accustomed to, so we were just inspecting that. It's normal, but it is a kind of a thicker consistency. He is not frustrated that he can't get up. Um, it's his instinct to roll, and that is cleaning the sack off of him. You're welcome, Terry. I'm sorry you couldn't always get their best view, but we did the best we could. Gemma Grayson, the alpaca dams do not clean the baby. You may have noticed if you watched any of the pig lives with Snazzy and Saucy that they also do not clean their babies. Camelids are a part of, I'm sorry, alpacas are a part of the camelid family, and in that it's going to include the, um, the, not only the alpaca, but you've got the camels and the vicunas, and of course, um, um, those types of animals. So if you want to Google that, you'll be able to actually get the full listing of all those that fall into the camelids. There are, the udder is located toward the back, yes. We're still quite a way off from nur from nursing, though. So right now we're just gonna work on getting up. Mom's just resting and then she's gonna pass. Right. So um, Carl was just adding into that. How he has taken a rest. That's a pretty big event, right? And then at some point here shortly, she's going to pass her placenta. You watch that on the other animals at the birthing barn as well. Yes, Dorothy, those ears, um, they're pretty long. <laughs> they usually, for quite a while, they look like they're all legs and all ears. Carl's going to go in and, and give some more dry rubbing space. Do you want this one on my shoulder, too? All right, now you're going to see him start to go more sternal. Carl was checking to be sure that a lot of that sack had kind of already fallen off the face. Look at that face. You guys see that? Oh, there we go. You're going to see a lot of that. So you saw him raise his head up and then all of a sudden just flop over to the side. Don't worry. He will not have brain damage. That is what they do.
So Kara, you ask a really good question. Will Halkia be defensive toward the other female alpacas when she joins in or when they come in and check the, the new Korea out? No, no, she most likely won't. She may be a little offish at first, but they are an extremely social herd animal. So they will all come in and welcome the new Korea. So what you're seeing here is the baby kind of working on balance, getting the legs kind of underneath of him to hopefully be standing within the next hour. That's a lot of leg to balance on. Yes, Justin, how are you? The floor is soft. If I haven't answered your question, please ask it again. We certainly don't mind those. Keep in mind, I'm kind of watching this Korea while I'm watching the screen, so my eyes go back and forth. Malena, he does sort of look like a wet poodle right now, doesn't he? Leslie, those nails are, um, when they're born, they have kind of a gelatinous covering over them. That's keeping them soft. And those will slough off usually in the first day. We'll find those laying around. They'll just kind of dry off as, as the Korea dries. Yes, so Carl has those, and there you go, Carl, perfect. That is that outer covering of the nails, so we're already losing those. So you can see, I'm gonna squeeze it, Carl. You can see that it's, it's just like a collagen. Yes, those eggs, those legs have been folded up inside of mom for a long time, so they have to learn to get those underneath of them. Gemma, he will nurse. Um, we like for them to be um, about 99 degrees, and then that's when we'll start with that. But we've got to get our legs underneath of us first. Him. Him. Yes, him. him. Thank you. I've got to say him. Cynthia, we do not have a name yet. The thermometer is right there, and I've got the blue um, was in my pocket. It's over there now. Carl and Camden are going to go ahead and take a temperature for us. Okay, so 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Yes, I want to clarify that for our international viewers. That is 98 degrees Fahrenheit. I just hadn't. I had a vision. So what Halkia is doing right now is um, what you'll find is a lot of times they'll give birth and then go have a snack 
rest a little bit. Um, she did actually um, smell her baby several times, but she's kind of preparing to pass her placenta now. You can see her contracting right now. You, I'm going to move this back a little bit so we can actually get a view of everybody. There we go. It's going to be a little bit dark, but she did have a contraction at that point. Nancy, hi. Yes, um, alpacas do not clean their babies. Now, what could happen here today is because we've had one, one Korea born, we could potentially have others born. So we want to always keep our thoughts on that as well. Thank you, Lori. He is beautiful. If you've asked a question and I've missed it, please feel free to ask it again. Keep in mind, this is an active, active barn. We are looking strong. So you can see that tongue sticking out and working. Long Hollow Alpacas is really, we are really excited to be able to share this with you today. We're all sort of chuckling in the background because it's, it never gets old, you know. So we are now rolling, we're rolling off onto the other side. He um, apparently doesn't like our towels, so he's rolled off, that's okay. Leslie, we actually have um, seven girls that are due over the next month. An average weight for the Korea, for Koreas are usually around 15 pounds. Of course, we have them smaller and larger. We really don't like for them to be much larger than 18 pounds, we, that does increase our risks during um, the dam giving birth. So 99 is our baseline of the lower portion of a normal temperature. Also, we know that they, they are not able to digest milk from mom without a proper body temperature. Thank you for um, all of you that are chiming in and answering the questions that you've already learned from the last uh, few days of the birthing barn. I definitely don't mind that. There is nothing wrong with the Korea. He's actually pretty strong that we can at least see visually. Of course, um, you know, there, there can be potential birth defects that we can't see. Carl, I'm wondering if I switch locations of the camera, if we might get a better shot. So I might walk to your side, meaning the camera's gonna shoot this way into the barn. Give me a moment. A little bit better yeah still kind of glares but okay any better Monica an alpaca can be rebred of course that depends on her but it's an average of three weeks after giving birth Cynthia duly noted, we will write Casper down as a name option. Angie, yes, the baby is, is uh, going to roll around. That's using those muscles, learning how to find the legs uh, that we've never had to use before. So you're going to see a lot of rolling and a lot of flopping back and forth. 
Their gestational period D, that is 343 days by average. You're probably going to see some of the um, other barn and mill workers going back and forth around the barn. They may even be crouching between the slats to watch the baby. <laughs> they're back, they're right there, but yeah. they're not hiding. <laughs> Carl, what do you think of your new addition? Big and got a long tongue. <laughs> so that's going to be a big baby, big boy, which is good. You want a good solid male if you're going to ever use them for breeding. Um, and that's, that's the idea here is to create the next generation of breeding animals. Hopefully it's a little bit better than the last generation. But that's what we're trying to do. Would you call him kind of a nice bright white right now? They're asking about that, how bright he is. And yeah, this is, he's, a, he's a white. <laughs> There's a difference between white and beige, and uh, he's definitely a white. Carol says Stretch would be a good name. Pamela says Snowball. Twins are not common, they are very rare. It can definitely happen. Usually the dam will abort a twin pregnancy. If they are carried to term, there are of course a lot of increased risks to the dam and the creas. And there's a low mortality rate in that. So, Carol, they're commenting about how, how Kia is just not really being interactive with the little guy right now. Um, for me, that's her preparing to pass that placenta, taking a break, maybe having a snack. She's resting. She's resting, but that is normal. Beth, alpacas typically like to eat the pasture that they're kept in. They also eat hay. We also feed them a specialized supplement that's designed for them to meet their nutritional needs. We provide them free choice loose minerals and plenty of fresh water and electrolytes on hot summer days. Yes, yes, Roland, he is a large baby. <laughs> I didn't even text I didn't even text him. He must have saw the notifications coming. Kind of. Notifications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Carl's pointing out that he the Korea has achieved sort of a normal push position, still a little wobbly. Not quite sure if he's got it yet, but that's on the road to getting the legs underneath and, and getting up and finding mom. D, D, you asked about how many babies has this mama had before? So this dam has not had any Koreas before. This is her very first. So it's extra special and exciting for us. And he's a beautiful white. My, he's dirty. Except he's already drink right. So as you can see, it doesn't take them long to um, start, especially when they're rolling, to lose that bright white. There was a question about alpaca spitting. They typically are, are not big spitters unless they're provoked. They do not bite, they are a docile animal for sure. Although if they wanna get your attention, they um, will definitely get in your way or they can even sort of grab at your clothing. And they, they may blow a little bit of air at you. Q-tip. Q-tip, that's the next name on the list, okay. Melis, Black Beauty, 
is actually due on the 28th, so she's te technically due right now. There was a question about could we have left her alone? So typically the benchmark is between 20 and 30 minutes of letting mom um, try to deliver naturally. As we get closer to that 30 minute mark, we tend to want to survey the situation, take a feel, see if we have any legs in the wrong direction, um, and at that point assist if we need to, which is what we did. Plus the water was broken. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the water was already broke. Each birth is unique. Rhonda, you are correct. Halki is five and Black Beauty is actually 11, so I will say that. Debbie, she's just having one. This is her Korea. Slinky. Hmm, I'm not sure about Slinky. We'll keep that in mind. Nicole, you will see that the alpacas will allow us to approach the Koreas. They typically, if they feel threatened, will place themselves between you and the Korea, and you may at that point be spit at or spat at, I guess is the correct term for that. Hi, Mary. Mandy, I'm really glad that you have learned something today. We appreciate everyone that tuned in, kept your live notifications so that you could finally catch the birth of an alpaca. We find the average lifespan of an alpaca to be 15 to 18 years, although alpacas do live over 20 and we have experienced that here at Long Hollow. I did read an article recently that stated that the longest retorted, recorded lifespan of an alpaca was 28 years. Allison says we need to call him Roland. If you missed the actual birth, please feel free to watch the live video when it gets posted to the Facebook group on Edward Feeds.
So Carl took a second temperature and that temperature had gone down just a little bit. So we want to at that point get in and dry the Korea off. We also did a second dip of the umbilical cord with the betadine. I don't know if you just saw that how Kia was watching everything that Carl was doing. He's also kind of removing some of that, that sack. And she made some of those humming noises that you heard earlier when she was over at the fairgrounds. Oh, now he's rolling in the blood. <laughs> now we have a pink now we have alpaca. A pink alpaca. So now you're going to see a lot of frog leg activity. As he starts to get those legs underneath of him, he's going to get the front up, get the back up, get one side up, fall over, all of those normal things and gain the strength as we get closer to mom. Karen, they are pregnant for an average of 343 days. Yes, plus or minus. Good job, you guys. So now we've moved in closer to mom. And now we just wait. Yes, and watch him get dirty. Mom's doing okay. She had some bleeding directly after birth. You probably saw okay, that, but that that, that yeah. has stopped. She's dripping. She's dripping. Yeah. She's she, loaded up. She's know. she's actually dripping milk, which I'm not sure you guys can actually see that, but let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. All right, so you'll see kind of in the center there of your screen. You're going to see her udder, which is a lot smaller than what you've seen over the past week with the cows and the pigs and the goats. There are four teats, but she is already dripping milk. Let's see if I can tilt this light. There we go. Can you see that? Kind of in the center. You might zoom in on your end. It's probably going to be a little grainy, but that's a really good sign for us. There's a little guy. There's some tongue action. Yes, our alpacas look like they have the pandemic haircut across for their bangs. They were just sheared in May, though, so... Sharon, I'm not sure I can pronounce that one. I don't think his leg is actually stuck under her leg, but I'm going to walk over there and just help out that situation. The mother is actually white, she's just dirty. She is not two-toned.
Palkia is five years old. Yes, I agree with you that this little guy is already thinking about milk with the way that tongue is working. That's a good sign for us. We're hopeful for success in that area. This floor is actually like a carpet. It is not slick. You're welcome, Suzanne. Thank you for all the congratulations for the farm. I know Carl is pretty happy. So for those of you that just joined us, you're viewing this birth on Long Hollow Surrey Alpacas in Gallatin, Tennessee. This is a part of the Birthing Barn Project. Started by Tim Edwards and Jen, I believe it's pronounced Apollo. I'm sorry, I'm murdering that, from Edward Feeds in Lebanon, Tennessee. So the main product for our alpacas is that fiber or that fleece that we share off once a year, usually sometime in May or before. We like to do that before the summer heat comes in. Lisa, I have no control over the name, so I'm not sure Elliot will be picked, but we'll put that on the list. Hi, Dee from Texas. Carl, with the hurricanes coming in, they think you should name him Stormy. <laughs> Leilani, this is not bowling ball. This is Halkia, one of the alpacas. Sue Murray of MM MMG Farms has bowling ball back at her place. Okay. We're going to change views. Camden is alerting us to the placenta passing. It's probably going to be a little dark from this view. see that yeah. it shades it out we're good. right there we're gonna bring in some lights for you guys she's not in any hurry no <laughs> renee she is actually starting to pass her afterbirth now we're gonna bring in some light so hopefully you can see that <laughs> you were waiting for that moment weren't you use that fancy light. Watch the thermometer there. Thermometer, Camden. It's better. It's better. I, there, there we go. Okay, so here we can see that Halkia is passing the placenta. She may or may not stand up. That's okay. Yeah. Of course, it would be easier for her to pass if she would stand, but she's wanted to lay down through most of this process. So that bubble that you see at her tail, that is her placenta. Once she passes that, we will gather that up. You'll see us take that away. That will be weighed. We'll record that weight. And it's our goal or hope that that placenta is about half the weight of the baby.
The babies do dry off fairly quickly. We often do intercede if the weather is cold or wet or as Carl determined earlier, we saw or he found that the body temperature had actually gone down a little bit. So we'll go in and help with that dry off process. Looking at how some of you are answering the questions for me, which I greatly appreciate, I can see that you all have paid attention over the last week and a half and that you have learned a lot about alpacas. That makes us really happy.
Monica is asking about categories for names. So far this year, the theme has been names from Night of the Round Table. I am unsure if that theme is going to continue through the next babies that we have over the next month. Marie, I am not sure if this will kick the other girls into labor. Sometimes it does happen. There's a wonderful story that gets told about a shearing day several years ago where four, I believe, right Camden? Four, four Kriyas were born in one day. And I apologize, I did step away to talk a little bit, get a temperature, things like that. So they're gonna try to get Halkia to stand so that placenta will go ahead and kind of let gravity do the work and looks um hey. and there we go all right so if she doesn't step in it it might stay intact for us There we go. And that looks like a nice, healthy, well-colored placenta. Camden's gonna take that. You'll see how it'll just kind of roll into that bucket and go get us a weight. Yes, yeah, she did make some vocal noises there. She did not want to stand up. She's a little bit tired. I'm going to walk around, take a look at mom. Mom's in good shape after passing the placenta. I'm gonna step out of you for a while, guys, and let them have some time, okay? I may have to move the camera for you. That's Camden, everybody. Here we go with the legs. So we just want to remind everyone if, if you've enjoyed the past couple of weeks with the birthing barn, definitely go to thebirthingbarn.org. There is a donate tab there. There's also a shop tab. And we, we would just appreciate any donations that you feel that you would, would like to share. So she will not help him stand, but she will offer encouragement. That was rough. We're going to lay down and take a rest now. Being born, it takes a lot of energy. So you will see that there will be frequent breaks.
So you may have remembered at the birthing barn that we were using some lactation herbs to help bring in the milk. So we've had good results, you know, with that so far. So we are giving her some snacks on and off. I know some of you might were probably concerned about that and mixed in with that are still some of those lactation herbs for today. Brita, sometimes we do help them nurse. It really depends on how the process goes. We try to let that natural process take place as much as possible. Any intervention on our part sometimes can actually slow things down, but we also want to do what's right for the Kriya and for the dam. Thank you, Jillian. Look at that, Carl. Yeah. So they're wondering if this is a normal progression, normal time frame for the creata. This is really pretty thing. good. Maybe, it, you know, not much faster than this. It's been an hour. Everything started about where 944 was reported yeah. birth time. So. so in less than an hour. Yeah. Trying to he's, get that. He's standing up. And now he's just got to get his balance there and you'll start wandering around. Standing up also helps bring his temperature up. The more activity he has, the more his temperature will come up. So just like if you were out taking a walk or exercising, you're going to warm up. So that's the same concept of trying to get the Korea scooting and moving across the floor as well then finally up on those legs we're going to find that increases that body temperature these are all the caps yes the caps are laying all over the floor there was a question about the lactation stimulator that's a mix of fenugreek basil caraway dill fennel and red raspberry if you look in closely at the floor i'm going to zoom in carl was pointing out um, you can see some of the caps laying on the floor. There's one on, on the screen right below Hakia's foot, and then a, a couple off to the left. Lulani, temperature is important mainly for digestion, but of course we, we don't want the baby to drop in temperature because that, that could be a very high risk factor for us. But just like with most animals, we're not able to break down food if we don't have the proper temperature. All right, look, here you go. First steps. You guys are getting to witness it with us. Trying to balance a plate on four toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, there are 106 alpacas in total on the farm. That includes male and females, and there are seven more on the way. Actually, no, six more on the way. We have a new Kriya. Plus, we have. Um, how many bread for next year? Nine. Nine bread for next Nine. year right now. Nine bread for next year. Oh, so we're inching off the screen. He goes in there. I think we'll just let him go. Because then it... Down we go. We might have to move the light stand. <laughs> yeah. So they're not really smart at this age, so he's trying to figure out how to get through the light stand. So 
So we do have some Koreas here now that are um, basically 12 weeks of age, almost, almost 12 weeks of age, and they are just now starting to investigate solid pellets. So we're all gonna take a walk together. Colleen, no, it's not an even split on the males to females here. Pretty close. Tracy, she will not be protective of her babies when the others join in. Typically, they do not mind the other alpacas joining in and um, investigating the baby, smelling the baby, sharing a uh, room with the baby. Carl. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, idiot. So we have an escape artist already. So there was a question at the barn as to why we had um, basically put wire around the bottom of the pen that we had at the birthing barn, and you just witnessed why. They will find the smallest space and find their way through it for sure. <laughs> the great escape, correct. Hi, Diane. I love that you guys are giving me a lot of the laughing emoticons because um, it lets me know you found that as funny as I did. Houdini. Oh, I love that, Myra. Houdini. It is a boy, Coda. It is a boy. I'm sorry you missed it. Kathleen, yes, he could very well, with his, with his personality so far, he could end up being our inquisitive problem child. Every farm has one. Yes, I apologize. He is behind the camera right now. What we are doing is sort of prepping this area for them to stay in for a little while today. So just bear with us. We're getting in some hay. We're getting in some water. I'm going to slowly move around for you. I am using the tripod today, so hopefully um, you won't have such jittery arms that I, that I had before with the pigs. So the weight and color of the placenta is an overall indication of the health um, of the pregnancy. That gives us a good idea too of, of the, the baby's weight and um, if there were any deficiencies during her pregnancy. And down we went. It's okay, the floor is soft. Tanya, she will not have two babies. This is her, she has, alpacas typically have singles. Halkia is the dam and she is five years old and this is her first Kriya. Jolene, typically we do not bathe the alpacas. However, what we will do is go in and clean her up and wash her udder as we get closer to seeing nursing take place. She's dripping, like the milk is dripping from her. Coda, we have not weighed the little one yet. We are just giving mom and her little baby some time. Letting him get legs under him. Roberta, we would like for him to nurse as soon as possible, but that varies per Korea, so it could be pretty quick within the first couple of hours. That's what we hope for, but um, I don't have as much experience as some of the other uh, folks here at the farm, but we do see them 
if they if they're going beyond three to four hours, then we want to help out. Okay, Camden took the baby away. He's going to wait for us. So the Korea is weighing in at Tandem Coda says hi. So what you're going to find out with the alpacas is unlike the pigs, we're going to constantly be in motion. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is just do a little clean up. And Kathy may or may not like this, okay? So you're probably going to hear her talk. Hey, guys. So what I'm doing right now is checking these um, and stripping these to be sure that each of the... 
so we have checked our udder. We've washed our udder. We've expressed out any of the plugs that were there as well as expressed some of the milk. I placed a little bit of that milk onto the baby's lips. So we've got a little lick action going on. And now Hauke is getting a little bit more possessive. So you can hear her humming. And just so that you can see this as we walk toward the gate, look here. So everyone's outside the gate. And that's, that's part of her herd. They are wanting to come in and socialize with this new baby. So what you're seeing now is that the Korea is attempting to locate mom's udder. So he is going to walk back and forth between her. He'll try poking his nose around in her armpits, her chest, her tail and then eventually he will find her udder. While he's up in just a moment I am going to dip that umbilical cord again. I just dipped now, um, wanted to move the camera, and it's going to get temp here. Yes. So Carl is going to go in and double check our temperature for us. We just dipped the umbilical. You probably saw me do that. Carl, we've cleaned udder, we've expressed, we've. I'm watching. Okay. I'm watching. <laughs> okay. Everybody here. No pressure, huh? So we are using betadine to dip the umbilical cord. Sharon, it takes a village, absolutely, to sometimes make this work, as you guys saw with Jen's um, gilts and sows. We will let them socialize with the rest of her herd once we see um, you know, some good nursing activity. normal for them long legged ones. <laughs> By tomorrow those are probably be just right now. So so I was just checking with Carl about how cow hawked he looks in the rear right now. That that'll correct itself. Um, as someone said earlier, those long legs have been folded up in a really tight position for many months now. So it takes a little bit of time for that. Mom's play paying good attention to it. Considering that we're doing this in here with them. And she's a first time mom. So yeah. That closer, so. Yeah, it doesn't always go this smoothly. This was a pretty much textbook. So, we like textbook births. 
Yes, Myra, he's, he is getting around pretty well. He's getting stronger. You're going to see that improve, and then at some point you'll watch him actually try to run. We call that sproink. And he'll probably fall on his face, so it's okay if that happens. He was trying to check the wall out and, and potentially look to see if there was food located there, but you saw Halkia go over to him and kind of let him know that was not correct. Mm -hmm. So he is locating. Notice that Halkia is trying to move that right leg back out of the way so that he can get in there and drink. And she's turning around for the camera. Well, she's had practice yeah. <laughs> over the last, last few weeks. So I'm still with you guys. I'm just walking around with the camera, just trying to be a little bit more quiet and give them some time to bond. Beth, you will eventually find that milk. Right now he's getting his legs under him. He's building strength so he'll be able to stand for longer periods of time. He's exploring his new world. Carol, yes, sometimes their tails may wag. Most of the time that tail will just come in an upright position, and that's definitely one of the ways we can determine if they've latched on. But I'm gonna tell you from experience too that that doesn't always happen. Um, usually that's the case, but sometimes they will um, not raise their tails. We had one this past spring that was like that, so it was a little bit more difficult. Okay, take a look here. Everyone watching. Say hi. Viviana. Anita, the baby was born on this live, so if you missed the, the beginning part, you can go back and watch that. Black Beauty has been a part of how he is hurt, correct.
Someone asked where Black Beauty was. She's actually just outside the gate behind me. She's cushed, so remember cush means that she's laid down. Lilani, Black Beauty is not giving us any signs as of right now, but we've learned with alpacas over the years that that is subject to change at any point when they are close to their due dates. The Koreas are born with erupted lower front incisors. They do not have upper incisors, meaning front teeth, so just the lower ones. Carl, are Koreas usually born the same color as their dam, or can they be different? They can be totally different. Um, the sire for this baby is fawn colored. Um, the baby's white, but that that sire, his sire was black. So we could have just as easily had a black baby, but more than likely if we would have had black pushed through, we would have had two colors, white and black. But it's like Christmas, you just never know until the package is unwrapped. <laughs> That's how we look at it. And Linda wants to know what we think the difference is between an alpaca and a llama. About 150 pounds and about 16 to 18 inches. <laughs> Actually, they're just a bigger cousin. Joanne, I see you're still awake. It's 2 a.m. where you're located. I hope that won't interfere with your work schedule tomorrow. Anita, you asked what a Kriya is. The Kriya is the term for baby. That's what we use for baby, like you would say a foal for a horse. Or a calf. Or a calf for a cow. Or a kid for a goat. Yes, you just heard one of the puppies bark. We have five dogs right now, two adults and three puppies. Halkia was born on this farm, but the breeding for Halkia actually took place in Oregon. So we had shipped her mother from Tennessee to Oregon to be bred to a uh, world-class male, white male alpaca. was born about an hour and 15 minutes ago. 944 was what one of the viewers had recorded for us. Thank that's, you for that. That's Central Time USA. No, not border collies because we don't use them to herd the animals. We use them to protect the animals from mainly other canines in this area, but they are livestock guardian dogs. Uh, the ones we have are Pyrenees or Pyrenees Anatolian crosses. Pauline, we do not have other type of livestock animals here. We um, just have the alpaca and the guard dogs. And a barn cat. And Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Crystal wants to know what we use the alpacas for. Oh, wow. The beautiful fleece that's on the outside of this animal, that is the product that they produce. Um, we have a fiber mill here, and so we are able to process the alpaca fiber into yarn, and we can uh, knit garments out of that fiber that we then sell. So as I said before, keep in mind, once we have found our legs, we're going to be in constant motion with the camera. And you're going to see this little one just tasting and licking and getting in corners, standing against the wall for a little while. Come on, put him on yeah, I was going to say at this point. Let's go over here. Here's your baby. 
So there was a question that came across, had the Korea nursed yet? No, not yet, but we should be getting pretty close. The clothing line that Carl spoke of, you can go to newerafiber.com and take a look at the products that are made here at the farm. And the Korea is, is following Carl. So now we're, gonna, now we're in a little bit of a rodeo. Here we go. How Kia is a little bit concerned, so she's following in too. We will eventually um, help him nurse if he doesn't do that on his own. We'll, we'll intervene. But as I said earlier, we really put forth an effort to give them time. So yes, we do have dryer balls available. Alpaca dryer balls, they're wonderful. So, <laughs> mom says she's not gonna chase them around anymore. How he is gonna take a break. You and I and 540 other people are gonna walk around for a little bit. <laughs> By the way, uh, this is, we only have Surrey alpacas. So there are two kinds of alpacas, um, wakayas and Surreys. The wakaya has a crimpier fleece and the Surrey has a straight fleece. And if you look at this baby, you can see the, that fleece is just standing up straight. Right? And uh, it will grow to about seven or eight inches by next spring when we shear. So the average lifespan of the alpaca we find is between 15 to 18 years. So when you're looking at alpaca versus llama, you want to first um, research each of those and decide what you're going to be using this animal for on your farm. Llamas tend to be more of a guard animal. So a dryer ball is actually something that you would put in your dryer with your clothing and what that's going to do is a lot of things. It will attract, um, if you've got like loose fibers, things like that, they'll kind of stick to the dryer ball. It acts as a fabric softener. It also helps to reduce wrinkles on the clothing as well. And because it's kind of separating the clothes as they dry, you'll find that the clothing tends to dry a little bit quicker. Uh, Margie, the, the land is pretty much uh, is anywhere that you can have a pasture without too, too many trees and too much, uh, you know, they are currently raised everywhere from Florida to the Canadian border to um, California and high mountains in the Rockies. Uh, people have them both on dry lots and or pastures and some people have them just on pastures even so that they can uh, eat the grass and uh, you don't have to feed them as much. Hi Claudia, yes the baby is here. If you've just joined us and missed it then you can go back and watch the video later and get to see the first part where he was actually born. And <clears throat> oh, Cindy, you can buy alpacas from almost every alpaca breeder that has them. If you're uh, in your area, all you have to do is, uh, is uh, Google alpaca breeders in my area and 
um, you'll you'll get a whole list of animals and you can widen that search to get them all over the United States or actually all over the world now. Nancy, we do trim her bangs. They are sheared once a year. So at that point, we do give them a bit of a blunt cut across the eyes. That visor that they have actually is an important part. It actually it can help to protect the eyes from the sun and dirt particles and bugs as well. They do have those rather large round bulbous eyes. If they do need trimmed up uh, mid-year, we'll take care of that as well. Black Beauty is doing just fine. She is out, um, just actually right outside the gate. Donna, he has not officially nursed yet, although he has been searching. You're welcome, Myra. So you guys did see him kind of take off on a little run right there. <laughs> yeah, here he goes again. Yeah, he's chasing you, Carl. I'm going to see if I can just take a wider view over in the corner here. Um, Carl's going to put him up underneath the udder and see if he, can, if he can find it. He's been running around for a while now, so we'll start a little bit of intervention. He's pretty strong. Changed a little bit of the lighting so perhaps there won't be as much of a glare for you.
doing was just trying to give a little bit of direction there. We don't want to interfere too much. Um, just to kind of get him up underneath the udder. He's still pretty inquisitive right now, so he's just checking everything out. This is a first time mom. Cecilia, if for some reason he is is not nursing well off of Halkia, we will then bottle feed. We do keep colostrum, frozen colostrum here at the farm, so we would start with that. Remember that we talked about that the colostrum of the mom contains the antibodies and immunities, vitamins, minerals, that high fat content, everything that we need to in those first stages of life to keep us healthy. Jacqueline, how Kia is just dirty. She's usually white, but white animals do stain. And because these animals are animals that lie down and cush a lot, you can see um, all these laying out here outside the gate. That's how they lay, where they tuck their legs up under them. I have a visitor. So I'm actually going to get out of his vision by making a quick turn, and now he's lost me. So. But this is what they do. They'll just walk around for the first couple of hours, checking everything out. Curious George, that would be another good, another good name. Sorry about that. He moved off camera and then I had to convince him that he needed to head the other direction. Penny, yes. Um, nice to see you join us. He is getting faster and faster on those legs. He's still going to fall sometimes. That's okay. So yes, he is getting drier, so he is going to start looking a lot fluffier to you guys. Oop, little collision with the camera. Hold on, let's get turned around, big guy.
There's a nice shot of mom for you. So it's a pretty good shot of those ears. Someone had commented earlier about those ears. They often, um, especially when they're pink like this, for some reason they just look huge. And they have to grow into them. Here's a good question for you. Um, Beth wanted to know, where do alpacas originate? The long story <laughs> is they actually, they're camels, and they, uh, the, they evolved into alpacas in South America, mainly Peru, Bolivia, and Chile. Um, but camels actually originated in Montana but before Montana was ever Montana. Um, Camelids then migrated south to South America and uh, west across the Bering Straits over into Asia, Russia and Asia. That was thousands of years ago. Tracy, so you can replay the video after it's posted and watch the birth at the start. Claudia, we have 106 alpaca. Seven. Nope, yep, correct, thank you, 107. <laughs> it is rare for them to have twins. Usually, if they do become pregnant with twins, that a pregnancy will be aborted, naturally. No, the moms don't really spit on the baby. The mom, uh, spitting happens when somebody's doing something that somebody doesn't like. Melis, actually, it can take several hours for them to start nursing. Um, we would like for that to Thanks, be as quick Carol. as possible, <laughs> but it can take you know three hours before they actually get really latched on. So we did get you know some licks when we went under earlier. Um, not, we wouldn't call that true nursing, but we got a taste. Thank you for the compliments. I've seen several come across about the, the farm itself um, and the cleanliness of that. We are um, grateful to have Camden, who has done a lot of cleaning of the floors yesterday in the past few weeks to get the barn clean. Of course, he does that constantly anyway, but he, he keeps it all in shape. Wanda, the naming process usually takes us a couple of days. Um, kind of, you have to kind of get a feel for their uh, attitude and what they like to do and all those kinds of things. So, we, but thank you for the suggestions. Claudia, yes, I do work full time here at Long Hollow Alpacas. Barbara, they do at this point look like they're mainly all legs. 
you could see him there where he got a little turned around too fast and his legs just went all directions. He still doesn't have complete control of those yet. Kim, the average is kind of silly, but it, they run from 125 pounds up to 200 or 210 pounds. It just depends. They're kind of like people. Some short ones and some tall ones. Perhaps some of the viewers that are watching that um, are working with the farm could post the new era of fiber.com link for our viewers. Thank you, Lori. He is a cutie. Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> the alpaca is a little dirty because they tend to um, like to roll in dust. And in the morning ones, when we have a lot of dew on the grass, which they're out in constantly, and then they roll, they tend to just become mud covered. It, it will dry and fall off with time. Beth, we're in uh, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Where is Danbury? Lucille, we just don't know at this point if he'll be one that's kept or sold. You know, he's, he's uh, less than a day old, so that's something that'll be decided by Carl and Jan, the owners of the farm, as he grows. Thank you, Dr. Alba, for the link. Susan, the farm is located in Gallatin, Tennessee. Thank you for all the links. We appreciate it. We, Crystal, we will let the other ones come together. You can see him now uh, trying to nurse. There we go. I'm getting in there, trying to. Carl Jr. There you go. <laughs> Okay, Danbury, Connecticut. Thank you. Hi, Leanne. <laughs> Leanne is our neighbor, two farms down. They'll start eating solid food, um, start munching at the grass in about uh, a month, three weeks maybe. Um, and then they'll start eating uh, their vitamin and mineral supplement. They'll watch the, the moms eat it and they'll start eating and tasting it at about a month and a half to two months of age. She, Lori, she's letting him nurse. He's just not figured out where the spigot is yet. He's getting closer. You can see right now. He's he's actually at the right end, and his head's in the getting closer to the location. So. Thanks for the compliments, Lynn. Takes a lot of work to keep it like it is. So if you look at her, she is standing still, and she does have her right leg slightly back. It's hard to tell in the video, but if you look, she does have that right leg slightly moved back. Whoops, oopsie daisies, it happens. So she is in the correct position for him to nurse. Deborah was born at 9.44 9 this morning, central time. Don't, there are there are lots of articles written about alpacas and goats being in the same pasture. We do not recommend it. 
Uh, Monica, my wife suggested that we have something eat the grass in our front yard some 19 years ago. And the, we thought the alpacas would be kind of cute to have them out there and I wouldn't have to mow the grass. Um, since then, we had to buy them a farm. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. I'll tell Camden since this is his area to take care of. <laughs> Hi Mary, the baby will stay with Haukia until weaning. That is usually approximately six months. That can vary a little bit, but that's the average. Lori, the dog that we have, there are actually five. There are two older dogs um, that are Great Pyrenees or Great Pyrenees mix. And then we have three new additions to the farm that are Anatolian Pyrenees. Lori, he is, uh, he's actually getting up under there now. No, no, there almost, he there he goes. Well, almost. And he may wait till he's off camera to nurse, you know. He might be like how Keo was at the birthing barn and be camera shy. Leslie, yes, he'll stay here until he's weaned, um, and we won't sell him or move him out until uh, until he's been weaned. We we like him to get at least that old. Deborah, this is the first alpaca baby this fall to be born. Black Beauty has not had hers yet. Before we. In the live, I will walk you over to the puppies so you can see them. So he's in the right location, but he's gone a little too far. He's trying to nurse her tail. Since he's in the vicinity, um, we'll let that keep going, keep trying. Carol, you're correct. He may want privacy as well. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. I hope that you all have learned something today while you watch this birth for the alpacas. Many of you had not seen an alpaca give birth before, so we were excited to be able to bring that to you from Long Hollow. Keep in mind this is a part of the Birthing Barn Project, started by um, Tim and Jen at Edward Feeds in Lebanon. You'll see the link at the bottom of your screen that can take you to the birthingbarn.org. That, um, of course, we appreciate there any donations to help keep the project going. How Kia needs a break, she says. She's tired. Thank you, Teresa. You go to the birthing barn dot, uh, or to Edwards Feeds on Facebook. That's the there's the link to it. Nancy, this is not on YouTube. We're just doing the Facebook Live for this. Diane, if you joined in late. Once this video is posted, 
later today, you'll be able to go back and watch this feed from start to finish and see the start where we actually had the birth. Leslie, we keep the males uh, separate from the females, um, except during breeding time. Um, once they've been weaned, they're separated. And we almost had a mother-son kiss there. Did everyone see that? She cannot nurse while laying down. However, I think that after giving birth, she's um, wanting a little bit of a rest, so she's gonna lay down for a little while. Um, Pauline, no, Shay and I are not married. Oh, I missed my, that one. <laughs> Shay works for me and my wife on the farm. Uh, she's a vet tech and, and is basically responsible for the health of all the animals here. And uh, my wife is, in the other in our office actually at new era fiber which is also located on the farm but just in another building so cindy we are working on a farm facebook page the link to the farm website is um, longhollowalpacas.com and from there you can see, um, if you go to New Era Fiber for shopping, you can see the products that we make from the fleece from the alpacas. Michelle, we'll probably keep the group separate for a little while longer today. It'll be later this afternoon before we let everybody go back in. Claudia, no, the males separate. They they were the only time he was up here with the female was when during the breeding process. Uh, the adults, we don't normally feed grain, like if you're thinking in terms of corn or oats or something like that. We feed a uh, pelleted vitamin and mineral formula that has a little bit of grain in it, but mostly they eat hay, good quality hay is what we're after. Diane, when they do come in, they will come and greet the baby. <laughs> Catherine, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Uh, maybe we can get something posted on our website for pictures. It was a it was a challenge just to do this. Uh, this we've been working on this now for almost two months. Michelle, uh, uh, age plays a part. Generally, over two years is where we even start looking. Um, a lot depends on the size of the two-year-old female and how it compares to its mother. That's, a, that's what I look for to see if it's got the capacity to, to be pregnant. So I've seen a couple of people ask the name of the sire or the father. So we do call those sires, S-I-R-E, and that's Sebastian. interested in animals <laughs> there was a question about what got me interested in animals I've uh, been interested in animals since I was a small girl Shay has a small farm of her own where she has her own animals she doesn't have any alpacas though not I don't So there you're seeing some affection from Alkia. Sebastian Jr. <laughs> 
Deborah, naming our alpacas usually takes a couple of days. We like to see their personalities come out. Catherine, I'm glad that you have developed a, a new knowledge and, and love for these animals. They are truly beautiful. Now, if you look, you'll see how Pia moving her leg. That's allowing him to get in. Got some good lip action there. You can have alpacas as, as pets, but what you have to keep in mind is that they are a herd animal, so you can't just have one. And they're a lot like a cat in the sense that they're not necessarily going to let you love on them. They'll choose that time. If you've ever had a cat, you'll know that a cat will get in your lap when it feels like it. And they are what you put into them. So if you, you have to be sure that you're socializing them and spending time with them if you are wanting an animal that's going to um, give you that type of pet relationship that you're looking for. Diane, she does have a full udder, so she's definitely got the milk bar ready. Vivian, we won't put one of those name chains on um, and, and, until we're much older because what we find is that they're so little that they fall right back off. And even though they are breakaways, um, we want to just, you know, for safety until we're larger. Carrie, the birth was live. If you missed the, the beginning of that, when this video is posted, then you should be able to later this afternoon go back and watch it from start to finish. Two hours. Catherine, yes, he's still finding the udder, so the tail tends to be where he's ending up right now. But there he goes. Thank you, Carol. Michelle, I just don't know if I will add alpacas to my farm. At this point, I do not have the um, necessary fencing. My fencing is, a, is more to contain uh, cattle. Catherine, I agree, he'll get there. We'll give him a little bit more time. He's getting in the, he's getting closer. So you can see he's actually learning. A lot of lip smacking noises, a lot of tongue action. And how he is being a very attentive and good mom at this point. Debbie, he was born at 944 Central Time.
they actually have good vision when they're born. So you may have noticed that eyes were open immediately, attentive, looking around, inquisitive, searching for moms. Once we got up on our legs, we can clearly see what's around us. Yes, Lori, this is her first baby. Car Carla, are you at the New Era Fiber website where you're having difficulty? Or were you trying to donate at Edwards uh, Feed, the birthingbarn.org? Claudia Halkia is five years old. This is her first Korea. You're in Ohio. There is a contact information on the site at neweraofiber.com. Um, there's a phone number right there and or an email address. You can, there's somebody there, so if you email them, they should get it. Or if you wanted to call Carla, then you, um, you can do that. It should work in your area. Catherine, there's about 50 male alpacas here. Um, about 40 of them are used for the fiber that they produce. They've been bred here and born here in most cases. Um, there's about 10 of them that uh, have the fiber qualities that we're looking for, um, which, you know, the top 20% of them, and those are the ones we use for breeding. Mom and son have both decided that it's a nap time. You'll notice that how Kia is staring at him. She knows exactly where he's at. If you're looking for the dryer balls and you can't locate them on the website, just use that contact form and someone can get in touch with you. They, they can just, the phone number is on the website as well as the email. They'll find it. I agree, Catherine. He's probably tired and going to take a little nap. So we are, um, we've been really excited to be able to do this live today for you that you were able to actually witness the live birth of an alpaca and her Kriya. So this is Halkia and a little male that was born today at 944. 
We think at this point they're going to rest for a little while. So we are going to end the live, let them have some privacy and quiet time, and then hopefully once they've rested, we'll be back up um, nursing. So um, I think that's the, our best decision right now is just to give them some privacy for the nursing in the interest of the CREA. The spot on his neck is dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he rolled right around in the few dirty spots he could find <laughs> when he was born. So, uh, but that'll clean up and go away. Sherry, you asked if you could see more births. I am I'm not completely sure of the schedule that the Edward Feeds Facebook Live page has in store for you. So I just encourage you to keep all of your notifications set so that you can catch those. So we are going to cut the live off. We just want to say thank you again to Edwards Feeds, Tim and Jen, for allowing us to be a part of this. We hope that you found it educational. Don't forget the puppies. Oh, the puppies. I promised you the puppies. Okay. We're going to walk over to the puppies. Let me come around and get you. All right, we're going to take a walk. So you can see our barn is, is a pretty large facility. Carl's gonna go out and bring the puppies in for us. They're out working. This is our inquisitive boy Tucson. That's the brown one is slick. Oh, here they come. Puppy! So we would like for you to meet Ingrid. I'm gonna get a better view over top here. Give me a second. All right, so, I got it. I don't wanna take it off, so there we go. Okay, so we've got Dagger, Ingrid, and the one in the middle now is Pistol. So the two boys are Dagger and Pistol. Those are the protectors, so to speak. <laughs> And Ingrid is really the guardian dog. <laughs> She's, she seems to be the one that has been the most on the alert. There you go. There's the puppies. That's their, our future uh, guard dogs right there. But right now they're just ornery puppies. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We we'll, hope. we'll try to keep you updated as best we can. We hope you learned something. That's the goal of the birthing barn. Have a great day.